Hello and welcome to the Run Up. My name is Nyamgul Agaji, and as always, it's been a pleasure uh, being with you all through the week. And today, again, is another wonderful day. The week has been very intriguing, and on the show, as we have been talking through high points of uh, what is happening in Nigerian politics, we'll be meeting with a very, very uh, important personality. He could have been my colleague. I should have introduced him as my colleague because he is a career journalist. He's a, he's, a, he's a media man. But today we're not talking to him as a media man because he has branched off into something else. He's now in politics. And I'm talking about the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Lagos here, Abdulaziz Olajide Adedirom. But uh, we'll not be talking with him right away. We're just going to take a very, very short break. And and in case you want to be a part of the program, you can also send in your tweets. On Instagram and Twitter, we are at Plus TV Africa. Just Plus TV Africa. Send in your questions, your comments, and everything that you want to contribute to the show uh, this morning. Once again, welcome to the run-up. Let's take a short break and return uh, with Jando, as we all call him. Stay with us. You're welcome back. We're happy to know that you're still there and watching the run-up. You remember that we have a series of transforming Lagos, as we call it, and we x-ray the possibilities of the Lagos we so desire. Uh, will a new government be coming in in 2023 to do the magic? Will we continue with what we currently have in this administration and before now from 1999? These amongst many are some of the questions that we would like to ask. And we have one of the front-running candidates for the number one seat in Lagos State. It will be a very interesting time on the show, I promise you. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you once again Abdulaziz Olajide Adediron, popularly known as Jando, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party here in Lagos. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. I've always wondered why they call you Jando. Yes. How do you? Because sometimes uh, pet names or um, Actually, nicknames. That's, 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 that's my nick. It's, uh, yeah. Every GD you call them, a lot of people call every GD Jando, but in my own case it's Jando um, because. Because I'm Jando. <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. I like following the crowd. Okay. Uh, but um, you are a career um, journalist or media man, as I, I said in my introduction. Uh, but now you branch into politics. We, what inspired you to come into politics and especially to throw yourself up uh, into the ring uh, to have the number one seat in Lagos? Okay, first, um, I think I think let's start it from what you know about journalism. Mm -hmm. um, it's a profession that um, from that you know something about everything and everything about something. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as a broadcast journalist, I, as I've been a broadcast journalist, I've been uh, around for a very long time um, as a political correspondent, mm -hmm. which actually exposes me to a whole lot of things in, in, in our country politically um, narrow it down to our state here in Lagos. So it has gotten to a point where doing nothing changes nothing. Mm -hmm. And then um, we, we, all of us can sit down, fold our hands, because of course, you know, in the state of Lagos, there's this conspiracy of silence. A lot of things are not going on right, but everybody kept quiet for obvious reasons and, and whatever it is. So, and some of us believe that, you know what, we can't continue this way. Uh, we just have to see what we can do to change the narratives. So, and um, if you don't have any other places to go or you can call a home, then it, you have to come um, around and join the process. And joining the process meaning that let's everybody contribute their quota and see how we can right the wrongs. You know, there are a lot of wrongs in the state of Lagos. And um, we, if, if we speak about our peculiarity, we'll be talking about a state that is confronted with so many issues ranging from unemployment, poverty, um, flood issues, traffic, um, I mean health, you know, uh, issues and even our education as we speak, we have over two million out of school children. So how can anybody be comfortable with that in a state that generates a whole lot of money and with, with uh, you know, um, a whole lot of, what's it called? So, and we feel 
it is normal, some of us feel it is normal to continue to sit down. We said, oh, you know what, it is not normal. But for us, you know, we know how it is. Uh, we know we're going to be fighting against what you can call principalities. Uh, you know, and that's why we started this journey seven years ago. Uh, today, the journey has taken us to the ballot, where we then need to speak to Lagosians what we'll be doing differently. Um, I've spoken about all of these areas of concern, which, you know, um, what, we, what confronts us as people of Lagos State. But if we pick it one after the other... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll come to picking it one after the other, but uh, let's just have a background to you as a person, especially in your political career. Mm -hmm. You started off as an APC member. You mm -hmm. are even, uh, I don't know if you still are, but the chairman of Lagos for Lagos. So let's first of all start by knowing why did you leave the APC? Okay, um, of course, yes, we started our agitation within the APC. and um, But we know from day one that... Uh, by, by, do, by so doing, we have committed what you can call an unpardonable sin within the APC. What is that sin? Is that sin is that uh, nobody, no member of that party born out of a woman have any right to aspire on his own, especially for the office of governor of Lagos State. The moment you sleep, wake up and feel that you can do it, so the owner of the party marked you as somebody who can never be. So he prefers calling people who never envision to govern, who never prepare to be in office, you know, to say you come and be. And, and that's the result we've gotten over the years. Um, <clears throat> in our own case, we believe in ourselves and we believe it's about time we have to, to do that. So when you have somebody who never planned to be in office, who never aspired to be in office, you know, being called upon to come and run the office, it shows that that person would forever be at your mercy. And that's why in the last 23 years in the state of Lagos, we've only had one governor. Uh, because um, it's the one. Let me just give you the latest so, to, to corroborate this. Um, I read something this morning on, on Morik platform, and I was laughing. What is that thing? There is this issue about a job you know, in yeah. secondary school in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And it's been in court over the years. And so June this year, Supreme Court gave a judgment, you know, in favor of Muslim community that they have rights to use hijab um, to schools. That is June. This is December. So the government of Lagos did not do anything, you know, respecting the judgment of the Supreme Court until Morik had to do a press release appealing to Ashwajibola Metinumbu you know, in that press release. And I also, with him, thinking that this is an election year, he had to instruct somebody who then now instruct the HOS to now do a letter. This is what we want to change. I mean, it's about time we have an independent governor in the state of Lagos. So when we started that agitation within the APC, we knew we won't get it there. But what our plan was in the first place is that, look, there is no how we can take this state from them except and until we create implosion within the ruling party, which would be successfully and move to the PDP. And that's why today, um, what PDP needs to cross that threshold is what we have brought in from APC, you know, because it's a party that has been doing 35 to 40% every election cycle. So what they need now is what we have brought into PDP. And they know, the status quo know that this is their end game. PDP is taking over in 2023. We're going to win them. And if you looked at our campaign strategy, it's something that has never been done before. We're visiting all the wards. Because it's not just about being governor. I want to be a governor that would understand my state very well. That's why I'm visiting every ward. So far, we have done 95 wards. Let me bust your bubble. Do you know that in this state, this Lagos that they are using to campaign for their presidential election, there are some community in this case that have not seen light for 15 years, 16 years. I can, gi I can give you specifics, you know, in, in what B1 in the Peluka government, there is a place called Lisa Community, in, in um, the same Ibejuleki, all of these axes where we even have the refineries and all that. You can imagine, no hospitals, no light, people give birth inside the kennel because they don't have hospital. We went to a community called Riba Community in what C1 under the Peluka government. We drove a 19 kilometer terrible road in dark waters to get to that community. That community, the only block that you see there, which they call primary center, was built in 1982. 
no nurse, no equipment, nothing in that, nothing, absolutely nothing. So me going through that axis, I then know that, you know, I can create a path in that road from Meleon Bay Junction, you know, on um, Ajay Expressway, and create a road that will lead to where we call it Tom. So from your Tom, that road will lead to Badori. So anybody that is going to Etiosa from that axis don't have business on Ajay, Awoyaya, and all of those um, villages. It will just cut off and all of that. So you can't even know that you can do that if you have not gone through that. That is what we've been busy doing, going to every world, so that we understand because so that when we get to office, we know how to fix this problem that is facing us. We have, you know, um, schools in those areas, those communities, no teachers. Nobody wants to go there. In fact, let me even get, let me tell you something. When I, when I planned with my team that we're going to go to that river community, one of the security guys deployed to that area, called me and said, be careful this place that you're going to. My colleagues went there and this is what happened to, to that person. And I was like, look, I'm, I want to be governor of Lagos State, so I should have a place that I can't visit. So that, that you know, is enough to scare anybody to say you don't go there. But I went there and nothing happened. So if we're speaking to why do we have a poverty rate as we speak of 8.5% as against 4.5% when this government came into office. It's because the places we're supposed to give attention, we don't give it attention. And again, we have unemployment rates in the state of Lagos now as I speak, 37.16% as against 14.6% when it came to office, you know, in 2019. Yet, with the fact that he said they have spent over 10 billion naira into Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. So you then start asking, your quest asking questions, where has this money gone to? I don't know, but, but nobody's talking. Everybody just feels it's okay. And, and um, that's, that's where we find ourselves. But again, uh, it's not speaking about the problem. We know the problems are there. That is why we're here. It's how do we resolve the, 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 okay. the, the problem. Okay, we'll go to those specifics now. But <clears throat> one thing I mentioned was that um, you are, or you were part of the Lagos for Lagos. What's the philosophy behind that Lagos for Lagos? Absolutely. It's a Lagos that works for everybody. I'll, I'll tell you how we started. I told you I was in APC. And we started this Lagos for Lagos movement within APC because we want a Lagos that works for everybody. As again, the current Lagos that works for just one man who decides who is the chairman of our local government, who is the councillor in my wars, who is even the king in my village. And when, when you, just a moment, sorry. When you say leg, um, works for everybody, would like a definition of who of course, everybody is. Because everybody this, respects you or where you're from. Okay, it good. Because the, you the speculations from. were that it has to be indigents of Lagos no, 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 that no, no. can <coughs> only aspire no, 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 no. for no, 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 elective no, no. positions. It's, it's, it's just an agitation, you know, that we, the true owners of the land, you know, started with. But of course, we know that. Our Lagos, if anybody speak of our Lagos today as being um, the wealthy state in Nigeria, we won't take out the contributions of our brothers in Alaba International Market, in Aspanda, in Ladipo. We know how much they have contributed into this economy. They are part of us. They will continue to be part of us. And that is why in our own government, we will ensure that all forms of harassment in their markets on the road, we put a stop to it because we know what it takes for somebody to come into your economy to play you know, uh, invest money, employ people, turn, uh, turn it around and pay taxes to you. But the current administration, you won't blame them because the man who is the governor and his deputy, all their lives, they've never, you know, employed people before. They've, they've always been salary earners. So you wouldn't know what it takes to run an economy if you've never had any cost to source for fund, you know, turn it around, employ people, and still make profits, repay that money. And, and so you wouldn't understand what it is to run an economy. So there's somebody that sits and work and sit at the end of 30 days, you want to collect money, whether the owner of the business make profit or not. You then give such a people, economy of Lagos to run. But some, <laughs> some would argue that if, if you are good enough at managing people, you'll get the people that will do the job for you. Okay, so this is where I differ. This is, this person always come to say, I made these people, I made that people, he made that, he made that. Look, we don't need you to make anybody. No, 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 no. Give us institution. Jack Conde was governor in this state. Nobody remembers who were Jack Conde's commissioner. But today, 
there are things that are speaking to Jack Monday's performance and, 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 and credibility as governor of Lagos State. I don't know if you understand. So you were busy making these people for your own selfish, you know, um, end. So it won't work. We don't need it to build people. Build institution for us. Forget about if you if you have a right institution, you you right you have the right people coming out of that. So, but it's, no no no, the fact is because somebody wants to continue to be the governor of Lagos State. That is why you will pick somebody we never prepared, we never envisioned to govern to say, hey, you come and be sit down there, and that person will be at your mercy. You are the owner of the structure. The moment you pull the rug, that person was going nowhere. Okay, look at Hambody. What did Hambody do wrong? Now, Hambody came as governor of Lagos State. He did well as governor of Lagos State under four. I keep saying it. I said in two years of Hambody, we have seen a lot of development in the state of Lagos, like the Ajaf uh, flyover, uh, Abulia Iba flyover, uh, Agege Pen Cinema flyover, and some of these inner roads that this guy built. And suddenly, somebody said, you can't go anymore. And the guy couldn't do anything up until tomorrow. Disappeared into thin hair. So I looked at myself, at my little age. Is this what I want to do? No, that's not what I want to do. So I put out. So just to let you know, I could also be governor the same manner all these people have been governor. I chose this route because I don't want to be that governor that would always require a second level approval before I can make Lagos work for the people of Lagos. Okay, <clears throat> now there's been so many accusations against you, um, and you just raised the point here now that the supposed godfather decides who becomes governor even when they are not prepared. Mm -hmm. Now, some people say that in spite of all odds, you reneged on some agreements within the PDP and you chose. Funke Akindele as your deputy, who a lot of people feel was not prepared. Is it not the same thing that you're accusing the APC of? No, 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 no. Um, what what uh, informed it, your it, choice of Funke if in the you, first place? If you, first, it's, it's, my, um, it's my constitutional right to choose yes. who will be my deputy within or without the party. Um, let's put that there. And um, the issue of agreement or no agreement, uh, I think we'll just analyze it in this manner. Um, if you have an agreement with somebody, it shows that that agreement has been there. You don't have agreement on... on. So I ran for office to pick the ticket of the party, just like every other person. And in the process, I had some people who stepped down for me. And in stepping down for people, I don't think it's something that you do um, in secrecy. The, the people that, that stepped down for me actually addressed the press conference. They came to my office, announced they are stepping down, and everybody knew they are stepping down. And uh, the day of the primary, so about six of us were the first meeting before going to the venue to have the primary. So three people actually stepped down, you know. Mm -hmm. And the person they said we had an agreement with was in that meeting. He didn't step down. And we'll get to the venue. So if we have had an agreement, I don't think that person should be at that meeting point in the first place. I don't know if you understand. Yeah. Okay, let's even say he found himself there by accident. And the first, third, second, third people were saying that they are also stepping down at that point. I think at that point, somebody ought to have said, me, I have long stepped down because we had an agreement. I won't be part of it. So nothing of that came up. So um, I think I want to leave that matter there. I've, I've, I've tried to address this matter. Of course, uh, it's something that you know touches one's um, character and integrity. Mm -hmm. But I can say here that no um, agreements with anybody. As a matter of fact, this person actually applied to be my deputy. And I have evidence of that application. You have a letter, written document. Written document effect. signed by him to say he would like to be my deputy. If you had an agreement, I don't think you need to apply to be my deputy. It wasn't the only person that applied to be my deputy. But anyway, that that's that's is gone because we won't be discussing it. It's in another party now. Uh, I think um, he's, he's, he's trying to put his popularity to test, which is fine. It's, it's constitutional right. But um, that is not my person. My person is that the people, even, let me even tell you, one of the people that stepped down for me picked a Senate ticket. There is an aunt of mine now that is not talking to me. Um, <coughs> I'm, I'm sure we're still going to say to her matter. He's not talking to me. Why? It was because she wanted somebody else. Mm -hmm. 
you wanted me to support somebody else for that senatorial seat. And I was like, no, this guy stepped down for me. I think we're going to throw our weight behind him to pick that Senate ticket. And I stood by that. Okay. Uh, let's go into specifics now. Some of the things that you have mentioned and others that I'm sure we need to talk about. Let's start with education because you have, you have I call it trans-border, <laughs> cross-border, whatever it is. You started your education mm -hmm. here in Nigeria. You went to Vienna. Mm -hmm. From Vienna, you went to U.S. Mm -hmm. and then to Oxford mm -hmm. in the U.K. Okay. So, and we've seen that in Lagos State, um, Lagos State has less than, uh, I think, less than a thousand uh, schools, public schools, but we have up to 20,000 private institutions. Mm -hmm. Out of 20,000 private institutions, only about um, 5,000 5, mm -hmm. are approved by government. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, there was this thing I saw just this morning, I was reading up on it, and I saw that uh, the reviewed list of the best 27 schools mm -hmm. in Lagos mm -hmm. barely had a name or two uh, which was a public school. Every other one was a private school. Mm -hmm. So it speaks to two things. One of them is the quality of education within the public schools, mm -hmm. and two is the um, inadequacy of these public schools that can cater to the needs of the people mm -hmm. of Lagos that they say are 10% of Nigeria's population. Let's start with uh, the standard of education. What would you do differently to bring up the standard of education so that they can be ranked among uh, the first, maybe 10 even, in Lagos? Okay, so let's, let's, let's put it this way. Um, you see, in, in, in governing Lagos, we have looked at what is what we call our peculiarities and how do we approach them because every state has got its own peculiarities now first we have issues of over two million out of school children um, secondly we have issues burden on infrastructure decay we also have issues on quality like you speak to and um, shortage of of, of um, teachers and and you know but we are coming in to first declare what you call an emergency on education sector in the state of Lagos. And first, what we need to first achieve is how do I take all these children of mine off the street of Lagos, first thing first, and um, so that we can reduce that number drastically. I know it is not in one day that we'll quickly put together infrastructure that is going to accommodate them because we don't have enough infrastructure to accommodate them. I know some of the things that inform some of them being out of school is because perhaps some of those will have uniforms to take to school. Yes, this state is saying they are doing um, free education, but we are coming to do free and compulsory education. So quickly, um, let me tell you, I'm going to tackle this. First, we are coming to ensure that all primary and secondary school students, poopies and students, uh, as it may be, have free school uniforms from the government. And this uniform, we have decided that local tailors within all the local government we, we, we produce for the schools within that local government. So by so doing, we'll also be putting, you know, boosting the earning powers of the local. Mm -hmm. And that is how to, you know, um, boost the economy. And that's, that's, that's on one side. But the, the most important one, taking our children out of school, is what we have looked at. Just like you mentioned, we have at least over 18,000 private schools in Lagos, among which only 5,000 is registered. So for us, we intend to collaborate with these private schools and see how we can take these children out of school and spread them across, you know, these private schools in return for tax incentives or holiday, as may be. I'll provide all the things they need, learning, learning aids and uniform, you know, in that school. And I say, you know what, can you take them, you know, um, off the street for me? Um, this is what I'm going to provide and this is what we're going to have while I then look at how to improve on the infrastructure of public schools and see how they can come in I would have achieved something at least take them off the streets you know and you know and do that then secondly we have issues with teachers there is this new law which approved that teachers should now have 40 years in service and 65 years of age, you know, before retirement. I know that Lagos State government hasn't implemented that law, but in our own case, we will not only implement that law, we will record those that have been retired to return to class 
and in complete, the analogue of the analog to, analog to yeah. and to complete the, the number of years. Mm. This will do two things. One, bring back more people into the system, mm. also assist the mentoring for those that we are just going to be employing right. into, into that system mm. and we will embark on rigorous training for them. Mm. Let me tell you what the current governments like to do. In, they will build block work, you know, put furnitures and paint it, and they say they have given education. What about content? You know, you can actually you can actually teach people. Okay, you see, when you go to university abroad, so you'll be wondering where are all the landmarks of University of Ife, mm -hmm. University of Ibadan, and all of that. What you see is just one building, and in that one building. You see the kind of content that we turn out. So it's not really about, yes, of course, there is need for infrastructure. But it's about the content, it's about the quality of the teachers that you employ to impart knowledge on these people. Mm -hmm. you know, if, if some teach their, peop, their children at home, but they have the right curriculum and content to pass on to them, and they, they turn out to be. So in our own case, we are also introducing into our curriculum. We've looked at it with my team and said, look, if it means that we have to go to West Africa Examination Council and for us to get this done, we, have, we need vocational training to be, because today what you see is that after university days, all our sisters and brothers, they're just going into fashion designing. So if we can start that from secondary school days, you know, and they have it. So you don't even need to waste another four, three years after that to go and learn and begin to work because there is nothing to do. So this is what we are looking at to say, you know what, we are going to ensure that we have free and compulsory education. And somebody asked me, where are we going to get this money from? Because we looked at what this scheme of free uniform is going to cost us in a fiscal year. And we, it comes to about 24 to 25 billion era. And it's like, uh, we have a lot of a lot of um, lawful but morally wrong organizations that are taking free money from Lagos State uh, that we can say, you know what, is we, we are done. Can we plow that money back here and, and we get what we need? So we, we, we intend to declare a state of emergency in this. And we look at the others, uh, about 13,000 other private schools, and looked at them to see how we can standardize and see how we can approve it. We would improve on I've been to 95 wards. All of these wards I've been to, you need to see the state out of, of schools how many? out of 245 in just less than one month. That's you need to see way. it, that's a lot. You need to see, and that's about eight local government in total. You need to see the state of our schools in terms of infrastructure and the likes. Okay. It is horrible. It is, and you, you know, there are pictures of those things. So when I go on that trip, I just don't go to campaign. Yes, I'm campaigning, but we're taking note of all of this because we are returning them to make life better for the people. Okay, uh, well, um, in, in case you're just joining us, this is a uh, run-up on Plus TV Africa, and you can also be a part of this conversation we are having with the governorship candidate of PDP in Lagos here uh, that we popularly call Jan Do. Um, we've just had this uh, uh, tweet coming in, and it's on transportation. Someone was asking, because our next point is actually transportation and now that uh, we are happy that this tweet came in uh, what you're going to do about um, the touts that we have in uh, this Lagos but let's before we get to that it, there's a lot on transportation first of all uh, we've talked about um, uh, schools mm -hmm. now <coughs> the gridlock in Lagos is terrible and the government or the people felt okay at some point maybe the only solution is to go with the bikes, <laughs> for instance. Uh, the bikes were banned, and they tied that to insecurity and all that. Uh, first of all, when you come, will you continue with that policy? What's your policy for transportation like that will make Lagos free of the gridlock that we find almost on a daily basis? And what alternatives are you going to offer? Okay, so there are two different issues you're speaking to now. Yeah. Um, transportation and, and traffic management. Yes. But let me say um, for traffic management, which again, um, it would inform with a new idea, fresh, a fresh ideas on, on transportation in Lagos. Um, you see, a serious government will sit down and take a critical analysis of a state very well, the state you want to govern very well. So what do I mean? 
you look at flashpoints. You know the peculiarity of your state. I'll give you an example. Uh, I can give you two examples of what you know and what you need to do. And they're, they're just there. Now, um, let's, take, let's take the normal third mainland bridge traffic. We know mm -hmm. traffic goes to the mainland in the morning, returns to the island in, uh, in the evening. But we can reduce that. If we, if we really want to do that. If, we, if you're coming from Ikeja, you know, when you get to Uwuru, on your left, you see an expanse of land, mm -hmm. you know, facing the waterways. And I think if we truly want to decongest the third million bridge in the morning, all we need to do is to dredge that water yeah. and build a park and ride in that place yeah. for people to ferry themselves from that place to the, mm -hmm. to the island. Yeah. And you will see that a lot of people coming from either Magudu or from anywhere going to the airline will only just go there and park. It. You involve, involve the private sector in all of this and you get that and you're able to take some you know, uh, cars off mm -hmm. that road in the morning. Again, if you're also coming you know, in that morning you know, from motorway 7 up, what you see is traffic coming up in the morning. Yeah. But if you look at that end, there is a very wide median in that place, from that point yeah. to Bagada Interchange. What are we doing with that wide medium? We can close it, we give us additional policy. I don't want to hear it's a federal road, it's this road, it's that. It's the road is your state. You know, I mean, I mean, close it okay. and give you more lanes. I'm coming. Okay. So the Just same thing, the, is, um, the same thing is where you're coming from, the third library descending that place, you see it there. Now, and there are some areas, what you need to do is just to fly over those intersections. This lucky uh, Maja axis, you have terrible traffic every time in this axis. Why do you have it? Because that is the only route that leads you to everywhere you want to go to. So we need to create an alternative route. I mean, through a gumbo, before you know it, you get to Oniru by creating alternative routes for people to, to, to fly. And all this intersection that you started breaking today, all you need to do is just to fly them over. How much will it cost us to do a ramp that will take you off those interse intersections in every place you have it? You understand what I'm saying? So the, there are some places you don't have issues with that place. What you have is the same people our government empower to keep harassing us in the name of doubt. They were the one doing all sorts in that place and nobody. So what it needs is just a government to come and say, you know what, I don't want to see you again. I keep saying this. The people Will that you have alternatives for them or these doubts that we're talking about? Egberos in Lagos are an institution and that's why the person in Twitter is asking and a lot let of me, people... Let me, let, me answer that person in, let, yes. me, let me answer that person in Twitter. You see, there are no Agbero in Lagos. What we have in Lagos terrorizing us is actually our government because if they want it to stop today, it will stop today. That's why I said, hi, Jando, we put a stop to any form of harassment on our roads. Now, this thing you call National Union of Road Transport Workers, all of us know that they are, they are legal. Of course, they are labor union. Mm -hmm. But because we're giving them more power, because we turn them to tools, you know, the government of the day has turned them to tools, you know, to oppress opposition, to oppress the people of Lagos. That is why they are what they are. So they have a pack where they, they are restricted, where they should be doing their business, doing their union business and, you know, and even making their money because they make money in that pack. So as governor of Lagos State, rather than using them as tools, as negative tools that this one are using, I will also use them as tools. What tools? I'll tell you. Uh, I've, given an, I've given that example. Some people look at me and say, what, are, you, are you serious? I said, yes. If you, ha if you are in control of Ojota Garage mm -hmm. and you are there as the chairman of Ojota Garage, you know what we have currently in Lagos is people come during traffic hour, break your glass, your car, take your belongings and run away inside traffic. You know, we have that often. So if you are in charge of a Ojota Garage, all I need to say to that person is that, look, the day they rob anybody in this corridor, that's the day I'm going to take this garage away from you. You will see that they will secure it. Mm. You will see that they will secure that corridor. That is if they are not even the one robbing people there. And because of the money that person is making in that garage that he wouldn't want to lose in the name of chairman, he wouldn't, he wouldn't mind during traffic peak period asking his boys to go and stand on the road, make sure nobody does anything there. 
just so keep it. So it's it's a leadership problem. It depends on how you want to run your state. So we have a leadership issue in this state, and that's that's the solution to many of our problems. Okay, don't forget on Instagram and Twitter is at Plus TV Africa. So send in your questions. Would like to flash some of these questions that have been. Uh, asked on Twitter so that uh, we get to answer these questions. A lot of people are trying to reach us on Twitter, so as, as much as possible, let's try to take these ones. But as we wait for uh, those questions to come up, we're looking at the internally generated revenue of Lagos State. Um, the IGR of Lagos State seems to be uh, bigger than even that of uh, a country like Ghana. Mm -hmm. And Ghana is doing well. And from 600 million that we hear uh, prior to 1999, and then within six years, in 2006, the commissioner then of finance was saying that it was up to 5.5 billion per month. And it is still growing as we speak. Is there anything that you think you can do differently that will make it even grow more than that? Okay, yes, of course. Um, the state of Lagos is blessed, okay? And I've spoken to a problem being leadership problem. Um, I know we do more than even what, what is declared, and we can do more. Uh, I'm not going to speak about all these um, rhetorics about 600 million to... The question to ask is, where is the money? We can't even see this revenue on the street of Lagos. And you go about boasting and say this. So some people, let's drop that anyway. Let's, let's focus on... I, I just gave you one of our schemes. We have a lot of money in the informal sector mm. that we have not been able to tap. And all we need to do is how to see how we can migrate you know, some of those sector from informal to formal. Yeah. So that we'll be able to put them in the tax net of Lagos. I just give you an example of our school uniform scheme. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just about giving locality laws, you know, that contract. I will give it to them. And by so doing, I'll be using that to migrate them from informal to formal, putting them into the tax net of the state of Lagos. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, uh, we're increasing our IGR. I don't know if you understand. And there are other ways to also block loopholes in this time and age. Yes. We have issues with the people in that sector where you have so much money, you know, carry market and all of this. We can make it easier for us by creating just as little as the USSD code to say, you know what, you can pay your tax by dialing star sources on your phone and you get it done. We have more money, you know, by Saudi because the, 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 the former sector is doing fine. Of course, you can track their earnings, they can pay. You understand what I'm saying? But the informal sector develop. suffers from multiple taxation as well. You see, the, that's, the, that's the problem. If you need to, like what is happening in Lagos State now, you have, they will tell you they have harmonized. Mm. Yeah? That state is taking everything. But the local government is going back you know, to harass these people and take some money. So they don't even understand what are we paying and what is it that we're paying. Uh, we, we're paying to. So what we need to do as a government is to be transparent to say, you know what, these are money dues to the local governments. If we are harmonizing, we have harmonized to ensure that one of payment is what you do and we're sharing, you know, between us. Mm -hmm. You understand? But if you don't do that, you have given, you have given room for all of that to happen. And getting more money it's also depending on you, the governor of the state, and how you look at your economy. Let me give you an example. We have something currently that is playing out. We were not allowed to deploy outdoor in Lagos. And this is the season where that sector of our economy makes right. more money. Yeah. Before they make another money, it will be the next four years. Now, as a government, you restricted them just to your own signages alone. Aside from the fact that you've taken everything and given to one, one son of your whoever, but you're not allowing them to make money. So you're killing your own economy. I don't know if you're You're taking any pass from people. More taxes that you're supposed to come into your coffer. You're not getting it just because you want to play politics. There are two different things. You can brand the entire state for all you care. 
it doesn't mean that you are not going to lose the election in 2023. They are going to lose the election in 2023. Let them brand it the whole Lagos <laughs> and paint it, you know, whatever it is. Okay. So this is speaking to how you can increase. You have to be deliberate about it if you need more money. And you just have to do it, not minding what source is God, by saying no, 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 no. Let them put whatever they want to put out there, provided they are going to pay. Um, but maybe they are paying. Money. How do you know? I'm saying that, do you know how much money that we would have invested in Lagos economy that they have prevented us from doing? Do you know how, how much money the, 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 the outdoor company, mm -hmm. I mean, would have? And, and you see, that's where I have issues. Even these people kept quiet. Nobody's protesting. Everybody just kept quiet. Somebody should come out and say, hey, you are taking business away from us. And the ones that you are displaying up and down, you are not even paying them. So what's the point? Okay, well, we're talking about increasing the IGR. That's the way you can increase your IGR. Is it possible to have something on our screen now um, from the social media? Uh, we can just, okay, uh, the Bay Ox uh, saying, Honorable Janjo, your plan to empower Taylor's is great. How will you be able to fund providing school uniforms for all pupils in public schools? Thank you. Um, you okay. want me to take that now? Well, yes, very briefly now. I, I, I just said it. I just said that when I was speaking to, to it that, look, it costs just 24 billion naira. I mean, except we have inflation that will take it a little bit higher by the time we get to office in a fiscal year. And like I said, we have some companies in Lagos. We're not even touching the you know, existing IGR. All we need to do this is to put in our fiscal policy for that year. But however, we have some companies in Lagos that are taking money from us. You know, I call them legally right company, but morally wrong in terms of what they are doing. And we will just say, you know what, all this about nine billion that you take from our state on a monthly basis, can we have it? We have where to deploy them. So the money is there. We're going to pluck loopholes. We're going to ensure that we increase that money. And don't forget, giving these people this job to do is also migrating them from informal to formal sector. We will in turn give us more money in terms of taxation. Okay, when you talk of Lagos, uh, people refer to it as the state of aquatic splendor. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody calls mm -hmm. it. Uh, yet, we don't seem to see the marked advantages of Lagos being uh, a, a city surrounded by water, except that, of course, you have the ports, mm. which are clogged anyway, mm. and we don't even have access to these ports. So what are you going to do for Lagos to be able to take advantage of these uh, ports, especially, or for instance, someone would expect that a state like Lagos should be an exporter of fish, for instance, because it's in the waters. But these things are not being done. So what are you going to do about the water situation and use it to your advantage? Okay, two things. Um, we're going to open, there are two issues in that, um, that we call blessing of ours. We're going to open our coastline mm. for tourism public. Invite players to come and give us, you know, a, a Miami-like infrastructure on our coastline. Okay, all we need to do, and this we're going to do, you know why we've, they've not been able to do it with the current administration that has been there for the past 23 years is because every time they want, you know, organized private sector to come and play in our economy, somebody is asking for equity, allegedly. Somebody is asking for stake in their business and they feel like, you know what, we're going. But in this situation, we're going to open it up for uh, people to come and play. We, we, have, we have a coastal line of over 90 kilometers, well, it's up to 180 kilometers, that is there for them to play. That's one. If you look at our blueprints, everybody will tell you they are going, doing ag agriculture. In our case, it's aquaculture. Because, of course, like I said, you have to understand the peculiarity of your state, of the state you want to govern. So this is what we're doing. We're paying more attention. You have, a, you have a blueprint. Absolutely. We're Can we see the blueprint of course, someday? The blueprint, because of course, we've been yeah. hearing of blueprints in no, this Lagos. I released, never, no, 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 no. I released on, on the day that Heineck asked us to start campaigning. It was the day I released the snapshot of my business. It's, it's, it's there. It's everywhere. I released it. I released our wealthy agenda. So in, in this, we are focusing on aquaculture. Because we know, yes, we are not an agrarian state. We, we have water. We are state of just to call it aquatic splendor, and we're making sure that we were paying attention. You know, I, I met with local fishermen on my on my tour 
deliberately asked and we need to meet with them. They spoke about their challenges. That's okay, as a government, we're going to make sure we create a hub that everybody will know this is where you want you go to where you need in Nepe. You know, we're doing we're doing that in Nepe, we're doing that in Badagri, and so that we'll be able to export what we have. That is what we have, is there. What we need to do is to clean up the water for our people, making sure there are storage and all of those invite players to come give them a neighboring environment. And before in, in, in one year you will see what we would have turned our coastal line to. And like I said, bringing players to come because tourism, you know, there is something we call mice in tourism, mm -hmm. meeting, um, uh, conferences and all of those things. If you don't have what will bring people there, people won't come. So if we make use of our coastal line and to say this is what we're building, hotels, conference and conference um, centers and all of that we don't have to use government money to build i can call you hey come and build this thing and then let's let's discuss i give you an enabling environment to that and you're making money as a business uh, person so it would drive automatically drive people there so we have this untapped in lagos let's let's just take some more questions from some twitter if if possible all the questions that are available um michael Aquino is saying obvious to everyone godfatherism is the major reason for failed governance in lagos state thus far what would you do differently to take out the influence of godfatherism in lagos state when you emerge as governor come 2023 well i, I think i started that from from apc and when some people were saying to me while in PDP that um, our leader said I didn't pick his son, I mean his friend's son as deputy, that is why he's angry with me. And I said, no, our leader just said to you that John Doe is going to be an independent governor. Uh, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, okay, uh, that's, that's nice. But, but everybody is concerned about the fact that um, PDP has always been in the opposition and no matter what they have done in the past i wouldn't say they didn't do well but no matter what they've done in the past like you said yourself they've been having like 35 percent maybe to 40 percent of the votes every election year what do you think what is the greatest selling point that you think pdp has now i know you've mentioned some of the things but the greatest selling point you think pdp has now that will probably give them that needed victory that you're talking about. Okay, so let me break it down this way. Um, for this, in this election, we have 69 candidates in all, 40 hours of assembly, um, 24 hours of reps, um, and then myself and the three senators, and myself and my deputy. And if you look at all of us, um, in, that, in that number, about, 30, 42 percent of us are under the age of 40. Mm. That number. And under the age of 47, I think we have another 24 percent. So in choosing who fly our flags, we've been able to first change the narrative and look at, you know, um, what Lagos needs really, which we call a breath of fresh air, mm. uh, in bringing people who are mentally and physically fit to be in office to run it. Fresh ideas, new thinking. That's number one. Number two is that the 2023 election is unlike the previous election we've been having, where even if you are winning at the polling units before the daybreak, something has changed. But now it's an election where you win and which will be won and lost at the polling units. Okay? And that's, that's there. Nobody can change anything anywhere. And also, um, it's not an election for a lazy man. You know, you need to put in hard work to convince people, speak to people, and let them get it. And for those who understand the native degree of the trade and know where they vote her, uh, you focus uh, on where to get those numbers. Somebody accused me and said, Jando, how come you've not been speaking to the business communities? We see that how you've been doing at grassroots works. I said, of course, I know that I would have to speak with the business community, but I think the understanding of the, of the game is taking my attention to where the numbers are for now. I know the business community in one session that we have a conversation and I speak my policy to them, they grab it, they know where, they, where they're going. Aside the fact that it's, it's the community I also belong to, 
we will never join the process. We'll just sit down and be complaining and be tweeting and be asking questions. So that is why the government of the day never took us serious. They will just go to the grassroots, speak to them, give them whatever they need, get the numbers. And what has that given us? So it is the community that has left the selection choices <coughs> to those that will just follow one person and do it. Okay, okay. Not, Let, not the other way around. Let's just go to uh, Twitter right now again and take one last question and and possibly we'll tie that to something else. Lagos State is borrowing 350 billion Naira to fund 2023 budget, having borrowed over 200 billion in the last three years. This has pushed Lagos debt to over 1 trillion Naira, highest in the country. What will you do when you win? Continue to borrow? Or how are you going to make your money? And, you know, very briefly, because our time is up, okay. you, let, let me just add this. What specifically are you going to do for the youth? So while you finish answering this, just also tell okay, us that. Okay, quickly, let me, let me speak to this. There is nothing wrong in borrowing. If you do uh, a budget and there is deficits, of course, you have to borrow because all of this is based on projection. Now, the problem that we have is borrowing and not utilizing it for the purpose upon which it was borrowed. This person, I mean, the current governor has borrowed 255 billion in, in the last three years that has been there, growing our uh, local debt now to 797 billion naira. Now, and there is nothing to show for this borrowing. Absolutely nothing on the street of Lagos to show for this borrowing. So it is not about whether you want to borrow. Of course, if you have a deficit, Lagos State has the resilience to, you know, um, to, to take whatever amount of money you want to take. But what we're speaking to is that how do you, uh, where's the money? Where's the money gone to? That's what we should ask. Now he said he wants to borrow an, another 350 billion to fund the 2023. Anyway, he's not going to run that budget. We are going to run that budget anyway, so we'll come back to that one. But the question we need to ask is, where is the 255 you've taken gone to? We can't see it on the street of Lagos with all the revenues that has accrued. And their budget in the last three years, you know, they've been reporting over 80% performance, both in um, expenditure and revenue. And put all of those together and you ask yourself, where is the money going to? No, I spoke to unemployment rate the other time. It was 14.6% when this guy came to everybody left at 14.6%. Now it is 37.16%. After you claim you have pumped 10 billion naira into Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. So the question is, where did the money go to? You can't, I mean, I don't know, you can't meet something like that. So it shows that that money didn't even do anything. That money further impoverished the people. So it, it shows nothing has happened in the last three and a half years. So yes, we know it's been borrowing, but borrowing to do nothing. Now, if you ask them what they've done, they will speak to the 27 kilometer light ray um, uh, blue, blue, blue line mm. that, that started 13 years ago. That is originally meant to go from Marina to Kokomaiko. Now they've shortened it from Marina to Maitu. Okay. And they are celebrating, you know, when we have um, uh, in Morocco, Al Borak of 320 something kilometer done in six years. Ja Jando, <laughs> you understand? We really have to, we really have to <laughs> round up this thing. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we can be here and, and tell you everything. Yeah. Okay, you spoke about the youth. So, it, it's just you have less than a minute me. now. Just, just yes, just asking me what we're going yes, to do for yeah. ourselves. For us in our blueprint, we are creating technovation ops in all the five divisions of Lagos. Mm. So, if we do this, we'll train because it, there are a lot of things are going on now. FinTech like this new CBM policies, when I saw it, I sat back to say, this is the time we need to put our thinking cap on and see how our youth, you know, who okay. want to be in fintech can quickly get a startup trained and push them into the economy because this thing will take a toll on the SMEs yeah. and somebody to assist them in that by saying this is how we are going to run with this oh. new policy. Okay, uh, I would really like to thank you at this uh, point. Um, it shows that we didn't finish what we needed to talk about and we have to uh, go off this segment now, take the news and continue the program with something else after the news. But we'd like to especially thank those of you who were able to send in messages from uh, Twitter, on Twitter and on Instagram and uh, we hope that you'll do more of that in uh, subsequent days. We've been talking with the governorship candidate for PDP that we just popularly call Jandor and he's been here telling us what he's going to do. 
and uh, we'd like to thank you so much for coming on the show this this morning we hope that you win of course I if win. it is god's grace no, i'm the next governor of lagos state i'll beat them <laughs> all I'll right beat him beat the godfather beat everybody around him <laughs> okay. beat even the enemy within in the party wow that, that's they have people within our party we beat all of them okay <laughs> and we'll form this government 2023 all yeah. right, that's how it's been talking with uh, Abdulaziz Olajide Adediron, uh, popularly known as Jando. And uh, come 2023, it, it promises to be very, very, very interesting. But uh, we'll take this break now and take the news and we'll return with something else on the show. Thanks for being there. <laughs>